Your whole life can change in an instant. About 50 million adults in the United States have chronic pain, and because of a car accident, Robbie is one of them. In their marriage vows, Robbie and Sammy promise to stand by one another and provide strength when needed, and lately they've been facing some of their biggest challenges. Join them as they share the ups and downs of living with chronic pain. everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Painful Truth of Living with Chronic Pain podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Sammy. And I'm Robbie. Yes. And welcome to the episode. Yes, we're back again. Has it been a minute? It no. Been, no, it's been like two weeks because we're actually on top of producing content. Well, that's good. I know. Look I'm at me. I'm sure all of our fans are out there are supportive of that. Yeah, I'm trying to stay organized. With getting stuff out yeah for once well that's good yeah exactly if you're new to the painful truth welcome you, welcome mm -hmm. you'll definitely uh, have to check out the amateur stoner yes phil, phil yeah phil's podcast he has a, a cannabis mm -hmm. medical cannabis podcast on mm -hmm. the limitless broadcasting network mm -hmm. so if you like our show you'll like his show as well very similar definitely check him out Mm -hmm. How many episodes do they have? Four out? Five out? Five? I think five. I think we've released five episodes. So, yeah. We have five episodes. I know he's been sick, so the yeah the last one is slow to come out, but it's coming mm -hmm. out soon. Yeah, he had bronchitis for a little bit, so. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But now he's back up and swinging, so mm -hmm. that's good. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, you ready to dive into this fun episode today? Yeah, what are we talking about today? So this is going to be our mental health check-in three. We've already done two episodes before, so this will be our third one. So sorry if you're watching this on YouTube. Our dogs are walking around like they do Yeah, in like the middle crazy. of everything. They're crazy. I'm sorry about that. They like to just be obnoxious. So anyway, so we are doing our mental health check-in three. This will be our third episode. So today we're going to talk about you like we usually do okay but i also wanted to talk a little bit about me okay because we spend a lot of time i think focused on your mental health like we did both but i do feel like we spent a lot of time focused on you because you had a lot more issues yeah all right so we'll kick say off the episode. issues <laughs> so when the accident happened way back in 2017 and until 2021 i was working i'm still a pharmacist but i was working at a retail pharmacy i was working should i say it probably doesn't matter right i think i've said before so it's cvs i don't know yeah i don't think that's a problem to say you work yeah i don't CVS. work there anymore i used to work there so i was working there when all of this started Yes. And we start having all of these issues. And as you know, if you've listened to a lot of the podcast episodes, there's been a lot that we've been dealing with. Yes. Continue to deal with, but particularly in the past, so right around the accident. And Robbie dealing with the accident and dealing with his chronic pain issues between going to different doctors, the different procedures you've had done been up and down it's been a roller coaster ride yeah and then his mental health struggles as we all know that's been up and down too yeah yeah where we literally talked about where i would go to work and be worried about you maybe going to hurt yourself while i was gone during the day if you recall yes i yes. recall getting in fights about stuff i mean there's a lot that happened so we always kind of talked about what was going on personally between us, but there was a lot I was dealing with outside of just what was going on at home right. with us. And I know there's probably other people out there who either maybe are more like Robbie and have 
chronic pain issues or more like me and care for somebody who has chronic pain issues or another chronic illness. It doesn't necessarily have to be just pain, but that's what we specialize in. Yeah, since we have a whole show about it. <laughs> good say, we specialize in that. But I was just thinking, you know, some other people might relate to some of the things, not exactly, but similar situations. So when I worked at a retail pharmacy, I had little to no work-life balance in my opinion, I would go to work, leave work, have days off from work where I was tired, I was stressed, and I was unhappy. Are you still kind of working on your days off, though? When I worked there? Yeah. Yes, because I was also a manager. Yes. So you didn't there really was get that separation. No, there was really no days off, and I'm actually gonna share some stories about that and what it was like. But yeah, I just. It was not a good time and I didn't realize exactly how bad it was until I finally left and have been out of the the bubble for a little while. But it was probably everything that was going on with us. It was just amplified or made worse because I already felt overwhelmed, burdened. Not that you are not a burden, but you know, like it just was a lot. Everything going on, work, me. Yes doctors Mm -hmm. everything exactly so yeah i understand so just to give you some perspective because we've talked a lot about going to early appointments when you had pain management you go get injections yes we'd have to drive to the surgery center the outpatient surgery center and they were frequently very early like four in the morning like well i think the earliest we had to be there was like six six yeah so there was one time right when covid was starting so when COVID hit, they stopped letting me come inside during the injection. So I think that was dumb. Prior to COVID, I could sit in the waiting room and wait on him. I could go sit with him while he was waiting on the procedure. I could see him right after when he was waking up. All these things disappeared when COVID came. They said, no, you have to wait in your car. You can't come in and sit with him. That was not allowed. Right. I all. think that's super dumb. Mm-hmm. Which was frustrating already because... We'd have to drive there so early. And then I basically am like, bye. Don't know when you're going to come out because you'd be texting me saying like, they're running late. I'm next. I'm like third up, you know, trying to figure out when exactly you're going to go back. So that was already terrible. Having to sit in my car and wait. A lot of people would like sleep (laughs) frequently in the spots next to me. There are people just take a nap while they were waiting. I'm sure. They just push their seat back and go to sleep. Not me. Yeah. I was usually working on something. From work? Yes. Yeah. There was, in fact, one particular morning, I remember, when we were there, like, six in the morning, and it's, like, dark when we get there, and I had to bring my laptop and make sure my phone was charged because there was a conference call. It was either, like, 7 or 7.30. I couldn't tell you now because it's, it's been a little while, but it was, like, 7 or 7.30 in the morning. We had a conference call. And this was my day off because we always made sure we scheduled your appointments on on days off. off, Yeah. So I still had to be on the conference call and it was something to do with COVID testing, I think is what it was. I don't think it was vaccines. I think it was with tests when we were going to be offering those. So I had to get on this call at seven, whatever in the morning while I'm waiting on him, not knowing when he's going to come out. And I just remember sitting on the call and then the nurse comes out with you because it's like, you didn't get any warning. No one came out to your car. I think one time they came out and like knocked on the window and was like, Robbie's almost done. Cause they kind of knew us. See, that's good. That's nice. Mm-hmm. But most of the time I didn't know you just would be there in a wheelchair, just ready with the nurse. So in that morning, that's what happened. I was literally sitting, listening to the call. And you came out because you were done at that point because you'd already been there a little while. So did you get out, get off the call? I, the call was just running and I couldn't even focus because I had to get out, open the door, make sure I helped you in right. to the car. I mean, like, I couldn't even focus on the call. And to be fair, it was my day, off, day off. Like, yeah. But I had to be on this mandatory call. So that's that's one thing. So, you know, I'm sitting there worried about you, but I also have to worry about being on this call and trying to pay attention to what they're saying reading about whatever training was going on for it. Cause I'm like, I said, I'm fairly certain it was for testing. So yeah, that's one example of fun. And these are things I probably mentioned or maybe briefly in passing kind of complained about on the podcast, but yeah. this, this is a little more in depth. So another example, we went to the Mayo Clinic. So firstly, 
when we went to the Mayo Clinic in January. It was January, right? Yeah. For your very first appointment. Yeah. I remember it. Okay. When January, the doctor is like, okay, I can take you in March to do your, your surgery. And we were so happy. Picked a date. I submitted a vacation request and was immediately told, we don't have anyone to cover. Can you switch your partner with your partner? So make him work full days for a week because that's what I needed off. Because I was guessing, but you were going to be in the hospital. Yeah. I'm like, I can't just swap shifts with him. That's not, I can't do that. Like I could, I would never ask him to do that. First of all, work a full like 70 some hours in a week. Like, no, Mm -mm. that's, that's insane. So we had to call back and reschedule. That's right. And then I'm trying to scramble and be like, is this week? Okay. It's the next week. Can I get time off? I need the week off. Got that approved. So number one, that's very frustrating. Yeah. Now it's a lot easier. If I need sick time for something like this, I don't have to worry that they're going to be like, oh no, sorry, we can't cover. Use your sick time. That's what it's there for. Right. But I used vacation time for this anyway, which I'm pretty sure I have a comment on this. That should have been pretty. Yeah. I have another comment. Or sick time. Yes, exactly. I have, there's two times you're in the hospital that I was charged vacation time and I'm pretty sure it should have been sick time yeah but I couldn't get anyone from HR to respond to me so that is what it is I just use vacation time for it anyway so the Mayo Clinic so right before we're leaving I had been told you're not your store is not going to do vaccines you're not slotted to do vaccines there's going to be stores in the area okay cool don't worry about it literally right before we had to go to the Mayo Clinic, then they're like, oh, your store is doing COVID vaccines. And by the way, you need to have extra people on staff every single day, people I did not have. You need to figure it out, rework your entire schedule. And we had like like a week to do it, maybe a week and a half. Is that when you decided to hire more people? I had to start bringing some people on, but it was very hard last minute to do it yeah i remember so and i will say my store manager she was trying to work with me on seeing what we could do to help cover because i was literally like i don't have people and they sent me an extra tech because i complained i was just like i don't have someone that at the last minute i can just have doing this all day that's that's not possible you know Mm -hmm. but so that happened last minute so i had to redo entire schedules so i did what i could before i left And then I literally was sitting in the hotel room while Robbie was in the hospital recovering, working on schedules to fix them. I didn't even know that. Yep. Having to try and take pictures of them, send them out, make sure everyone's good with it. Try and make sure I had everyone's availability correct. So I'm literally sitting in the hotel room. That was one of the things I was doing, was working on schedules. So it wasn't really sick time. It wasn't really vacation time because you were working. So they shouldn't be paying you. I was. I that's what I was doing. This this is how it was. So we spent a lot of time talking about, you know, going back and forth. I was hanging out with Lucy in the hotel room, but I was also doing that and having to check in on the store. How's it going with the vaccines? Like it, I spent a lot of my time also dealing with work stuff during that week on top of him being in the hospital after a surgery. So that's another fun story for you. Mm-hmm. I, you probably told me all this, but I was in another headspace. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I get it. It's worse than I thought. And I wasn't. I mean, I would never tell, complain about it while you're in the hospital because, right? You know, and I know. And the most annoying part of all of this is you were, and it sucks to say this, but you were in the hospital. And then they kept, and delaying, me they kept delaying you because you were still in pain and they're like, oh, we can't release him yet. And I'm having to add days to the hotel because we hadn't planned to be there as long. So like every day I'm having to ask the hotel, I need another night, which thankfully they were able to accommodate us. Every time I requested to extend our stay, they were able to do it. Um, so shout out to Marriott. Thank you. Um, but I literally was getting to the point where I was just like, um, what, would, what would are you- we going to do if it goes into next week? Like I have to be back at work. I mean, I couldn't have left. Would you have called work and been like, there's no way I can come. And, but the problem is they would have been like, they had you so brainwashed and made to feel so bad about using time off 
last minute, not calling out, not being sick, that I'm like, great, are they going to make my partner just work extra hours because I can't be there? And I'm just like, like now I'm sitting here in the perspective, like you should have been there. You you need to be in the hospital as long as you need to be in the hospital. Right. That's, that's fact. Right. And I knew that. But part of me was also just like, oh, my God, I need you just to get over whatever your problem is because we need to drive home. I need to get home because I have to be back at work. Right. And I should not have had to be thinking way. that and it makes me feel bad that that's how it was like I was getting more worried about missing work than I was worried about how you were recovering and now it would be flip-flopped completely you know mm-hmm. I would I would just not even be worried about work at all and know that I don't so need to if you had to be back in that situation again would you have been like I quit if they would have been like do you think they would have fired you? What do you think would happen? I mean, I think I would have gotten some pushback potentially if they didn't have anyone available to cover. That's what would have happened. And then you would have been. Then and they what? would have pressured my partner to try and cover the shifts because that's what they do. But at that point in time, that's probably would have. I mean, would I would have been in Jacksonville. Like I'm yeah. two hours, two and a half hours away. Like, right. what are you going to do? Exactly. Yeah. So it's just frustrating about that. And we ended up coming back what like sunday and then i had to go back to work on monday so i was tired and yeah but i was like well this is what it is i don't have a choice so that just added to all that fun with the mayo clinic because you know now i'm going to work and i'm worried about you because i thought we'd be home a couple extra days for me to make sure you are right at home and now i had to just be like sorry i hope you're okay right i gotta go i think i just slept a lot you did thankfully i mean i think your mom checked in on me Mm -hmm. And that's great. Yeah, I think she did to make sure you're okay. Because I think I, I would ask her, like, oh, is he sleeping? What's he doing? But most of the time, I would just be sleeping. Yeah, exactly. So thank God for that, at least. It wasn't like the first time when yeah. you had that surgery. At least they actually cared about me and wanted mm-hmm. me yeah. to be okay. Exactly. Not like the first surgery. No. Um, And then, like I said, like, whenever you had procedures, injections, whatever, that I needed to be there. I remember your partner... Like we had, I had a pain management appointment, and if you're late, oh five my minutes, gosh, they you, would cancel your appointment. Because I would try and go with you because and they were such we, fuckheads we that were running you know. late. He mm-hmm. came to work late. Yes, and I yelled at him. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Now you're wasting my time, and I don't it was appreciate like a whole thing. that." Yeah. And I, she was pissed. This because, was an older partner. Yeah, like she was pissed because I was yelling at her, him at her work, and at that point in time, I didn't give a fuck. I was just like. No. Don't ever waste my time like that. Super mad. You better be on time it's because he knew that we had this appointment. And mm-hmm. I was like, if you know we have an appointment, you better be five minutes early. Mm-hmm. He, he didn't say a word. No. Keep in mind, he is huge. huge. He's <laughs> yes. like Goliath compared to me. Yes. And I, mm-hmm. I'm five seven and yeah. I'm literally popping off at the mouth and he didn't yeah. say a word. No. So I know later he said something to all your coworkers. Yeah, but they were like, bro, you shouldn't have been late. That's basically what happened right? with all that. Do you even know what happened with him? Um, He went to specialty and then I'm not sure what okay. happened. I, I know I had messaged him. I don't remember the last time I messaged him, but yeah, I'm not sure. He did go to specialty. He left too, wow. but, but it makes you like, like a different person when you work in retail pharmacy too, yeah. you know, like all of your bad traits, I feel like just come out. I could see that because of what it does to you as a person. Yeah, I really and truly. Um, what else? So, okay, so there was that other time you were in the hospital, and we didn't know what was going on. When it was like last minute, like Doctor Thomas was like, "Oh, I think your appendix is going to explode. Go to the hospital ER right now." Mm-hmm. And we drove to like Kissimmee, yeah, and spent a week there. And the only reason I was able to stay with you every day in the hospital is literally because there was a floater pharmacist who wanted hours and was like, that's fine. I'll go to her store and just would pick up the shifts for the whole week. Like he didn't care if he was not available. I don't know what we would have done. I think you would have had to quit. You, you jumped to that a lot because but we would have had no insurance. No, I income. think at the end of the day, they would have tried to pressure you, but, but they would have, they, you, that was their goal is to make you feel bad. I feel like if you were facing that situation, you would have find a job relatively quickly. I wouldn't hope so, but Either way, I stayed with you in the hospital. And again, I used vacation time for that week. Did not use sick time. So, yeah. 
Um, there was another time, so way back towards like the beginning of after the accident, you would have so many appointments. Like there'd so be like Dr. Thomas, there might be physical therapy, there might be therapy therapy, there might be just a um, collection of doctors we were going to. And frequently on my days off, I would go you with just you. Just go to doctors. Yeah, Literally, and I would spend the doctors. day, and that's how I would spend my day off is going to doctor's appointments with him because he wanted me there. Mm -hmm. And it was easier, especially when you were on new medications, trying to remember all of that. And that's eventually why we made the binder <laughs> that we did. So I remember specifically that there was a day when we were out and we were doing on my day off doctor's appointments all day and we had a little bit of time in between appointments and we were at lunch at shake shack and i had to be on a conference, conference call, call. that was to explain why i was not doing enough flu shots at my store and they called on me on this conference call and i'm trying to listen to it in the middle of lunch with like earbuds in trying to hear him and what he was talking about, this like district leader or whatever he was, asking me like what I'm going to do to get more flu shots. And I'm literally sitting here trying to eat lunch in between doctor's appointments for my husband, who's having a hard time mentally, physically, all of this. And I, I just remember just being like so done with like everything at that point, because I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm sitting here. It's like some of my only free time and I have to be on this call trying to trying to focus on what they're saying, what he's asking me. It was just terrible. And that's what they would do. And this is what they still do at retail pharmacies when they ask you for flu shots and pneumonia shots and whatever it is that they're asking you for. Yes, there are a lot of good ones for you to help protect you. But keep in mind when they're asking you, they are forced to do it. There are metrics on all of these things they count them and if you don't meet the metrics you get in trouble you have to sit on conference calls you get written up they demand that you make a like schedule clinics to go outside of your pharmacy they i don't know if they still do it but i'm assuming they do to go outside of your pharmacy to give flu shots to people and this is not because they care it's because they want the money, the money. yeah and i just want to make sure that's clear i care about you and if I'm talking to you like now on the phone at my pharmacy and I'd say, yeah, I think getting a flu shot is a good idea. I have no gain for this. You know, my pharmacy doesn't do flu shots. We don't do that. I, I don't benefit from telling you to do this. So if I recommend something or agree, you should get something. It's because I believe in it. And not that I didn't believe in some of them when I worked retail, but there were a lot of people who were not comfortable with getting vaccines for one reason or another. And, you know, I can explain to you why I think it's a good idea, but we were basically forced to pester people to do it because we weren't meeting numbers that they designated and they would increase the number every year on how many you were supposed to get so just letting you know little fun fact of working in a retail pharmacy but yeah so on my day off i had to explain why we were not meeting our target for giving flu shots um, but that, I mean, I had many, many mornings. You can ask him of early conference calls yes. where I had to get up early. I had to readjust my morning routine to get on a conference call. Yes. That was mandatory. That did you, did they even work? Conference calls don't do anything, but just annoying people, people and frustrate you on your free time. I went to meetings district meetings I had to go on my days off or swap days with my partner I did not get paid to go to these meetings they will say it's included because I was salaried but I had to work and I had to go to the meeting and then work an extra day to cover it so you tell me if that sounds fair no definitely. these were all day meetings yeah it does not yep and it would take me sometimes almost an hour to drive there depending on the traffic yeah there was another fun day I can remember when this is prior to the accident, when I think Logan and Amanda were visiting and we were at Disney World and I took the days off because my friends were in town, our friends were in town. Mm -hmm. And one of the floaters took the their spare keys for the pharmacy, one of them took them home. 
he left with them in his pocket. So they couldn't open the pharmacy. They couldn't close because I think it was a split day. And by the time they realized the keys were gone, I think my partner had already left. So they couldn't get them from him. So they called you. Yes. And I'm like, I don't, I'm in Disney World. I can't like, do anything. You are going to close before I even try and get over there because I'm here with my friends. And I'm doing this call in the middle of Disney World on my day off. So what did they end up doing? What they did was they sent a technician to my, to the apartment and my mom gave them to her. That's right. Because the keys were in my coat at home. But if she wasn't home, I don't know what they would have done. Because they better figure it out. I mean, it's not it's, your fault. I don't know what you expect. That's me. what I would have done. I would have been like, look, this is my day off. You guys got to figure it out. Like, exactly. And that's not the only time I've gotten messages, calls, whatever, when I was off and even at Disney World. That's not the only time, but that one sticks out in my mind. I remember being at Disney on my birthday and getting messages about stuff going on at the store with the schedule on my birthday, on my day off when I'm trying to enjoy a nice lunch. I'm still getting comp messages. Like I did not get days off. So I, I just, needless to say, you don't miss working for CBS. I do not. I had, I every week I had to work on schedules at home because either I didn't have time at work to sit and do it because it was so meticulous or the system was slow and it was just easier to just do it at home. So I would do it at home unpaid. I go in early and I would stay late, constantly stayed late. I rarely came home on time, I would say. I worked shifts alone in the evenings. I worked full Saturdays, at least two that I can recall. A lot more than that. I, I can't remember specifically, but I worked a nine hour shift alone in the pharmacy because that's what they said I had to do. I didn't have tech hours for the day, so I worked by myself for nine hours. So I couldn't leave the pharmacy, couldn't take a break, couldn't do anything for nine hours. And then I would come home. CVS is a terrible place to work for a pharmacist. It is. Retail pharmacy in general retail, is just bullshit. Retail. Yes, but they are one of the worst. And I, I don't think it's getting any better. Um, are they losing people? There, yes, people are starting to figure it out and pharmacists are not going back to retail. They're finding other things to do. They might do what I did, go to specialty, go to some other pharmacy that's not retail, or they just don't do pharmacy. Some some pharmacists are so burnt out by pharmacy, they do not do pharmacy things anymore. So isn't that eventually going to hurt retail pharmacy? It is now. That's you watch, you see those stores closing early. The Walmart, CVS made those announcements. They're closing early. I, didn't, I missed that. What's happened? They're, they are not doing that because of a shortage. They will tell you that in the news, and that's what the news articles say. There is a shortage. There is oh. not a shortage of pharmacists. There is a short of, shortage of pharmacists willing to put up with the bullshit. And so that is the truth. That's what the problem is. is there's yes. not enough pharmacists that want to do mm -hmm. retail pharmacy. And look it up. Find pharmacists on social media, and they will tell you. There's a documentary they're working on now. That's like a Kickstarter, GoFundMe, whatever that's being worked on about retail pharmacy and the dangers of it. Look up uh, pharmacy and she waited and you can read all about the pharmacist in Indiana who was having a heart attack and was waiting on her coverage to come and she died. At the pharmacy? Yep. And she was 40 something years old. She was not old enough to die in the pharmacy, but that's what she happened. She just didn't dip? No, because she would have gotten in trouble for closing the pharmacy. So, so she, she was literally having a heart attack. Look up the, the hashtag she waited and you can read about it. And they swept that under the rug. They do not talk about it, but pharmacists talk about it because it's important. Then she's not the only one. There are stories, if you look it up, of technicians talking about their pharmacists falling down and dying in the middle of the pharmacy. Why? Because they're having a heart attack. They're working themselves too hard. And these are not older pharmacists. These are younger pharmacists. They're so stressed out and they collapse in the middle of the pharmacy and they have to just wait and people don't care. Customers don't care. The company doesn't care. Wow. Yeah. They're leaving on a stretcher. They get in a car accident on their way and patients don't understand. Why don't you just open? That's not my problem. And patients are just as bad as the company. I know, I know patients don't care. 
like they just not all i can't say that for everybody but the ones who don't really don't care about you as a person like they just complain about everything yes and they they will literally i've read enough stories where the pharmacist is lying on the floor getting cpr and there's a person who's like can i just pick up my prescription they don't care we had that's cool we had a potential it was like a gas leak or something we had the fire department come and remove us so we had to close up the pharmacy and physically walk out of the building because the fire department is like you need to leave while we investigate this and we had people trying to go inside the store while the entire staff is outside is outside waiting by the fire truck and there are active firemen standing there walking inside who are having to tell people like you can't go in there it's cold yeah we had during a hurricane we had to close early um well, you would think they would understand for a hurricane. No, there was curfews, all that. People didn't care. So we had to close early for a hurricane. And actually, I think the pharmacy was technically closing at the same time, but the front store was closing with us, which they did not normally do. So we had to literally cover the computers and like plastic bags and stuff in case there were leaks. There was like a whole bunch of stuff we had to do. So we closed up the uh, like five minutes early to do all of this because you should not have been out, mind you. Right. There's a curfew. The front store got everyone cleared out and then came back and started to do the cash counting so they could put everything in the the safe so they could lock up um and she locked the doors um five ten minutes early same thing we were closing it and somebody six knocked on the door there were angry people coming and banging on the door that we were open till six why are you not letting us in and there's a hurricane coming. Like I remember driving home that night and it's dark and it had already like the wind and s- stuff had started picking up. It's yeah. Cold. That's how people that's how people are. And there were like literally days where it was so bad where I would just be driving and I would be like maybe I could just get hit by a truck. And then I would go to the hospital and I wouldn't have to go to work for like a week. Then you could be exactly like me. I didn't want to be like that. Then we would be in the same boat together. But I would literally wish for stuff like that. Like maybe can I get injured enough where I have to be off and they can't say anything. And then I can have like a week where I don't have to deal with this place. Or when COVID came around, can I get COVID? Just me. I didn't want anyone else in the house to get sick. But can I get COVID so I can just be off for like 10 days? I remember when you had COVID and you had to go into work. Well, my test did not come back positive. Right. But this is the very early, early stages, stages of, of testing and whatnot. And I literally like, it was so bad. Like my chest felt heavy. It was like, it was bizarre. I was, I don't get sick like that. And I mean, I've had COVID officially now twice. And it was like the same thing where I just was so exhausted and tired. Right. But no, they could cover one day for me. And then they said, you have to go back and your test was negative. So you can go back. And I was sick. Sick as a dog. Yep. And standing all day at work in right at the beginning of COVID, breathing on people's stuff. I mean, I wear a mask, but you know, touching people's stuff and and trust me, this happens a lot, not just with COVID, with any sickness, flu, colds, you go to work because they cannot cover you. You cannot call off. You are made to feel like trash. If you do call off, you're guilted into going in regardless of how you feel. So you go in and you feel like garbage and you, you're just in there and you have legit sick people coming in. They don't care. I don't know how sometimes he did it. I don't think I could have done it. I think I would have been like, I'm sorry, I'm sick. Yeah, it just, that's what you did. That's what everybody did. You just dealt with it. And that's, that's how it was. So, I mean, I just was exhausted, never, you know, feeling like I had any time off. And then on top of it, I would have no offense, but I mean, like I have you to deal with, whether it was going to doctor's appointments, procedures, injections, injections surgery, surgeries. and oh. then you went through that period where you were angry all the time or you were depressed all the time. So now I'm having to worry about that. Like, you know, I just spent all day getting yelled at by people, being stressed down. Then I come home and then guess who else is yelling at me? Robbie is yelling at me. He's pissed off at me too. And I'm just like, well, that's just great. That, that was hard. What was I yelling you about? Everything. I don't know. You just, if I looked at you sideways, you just were like pissed at me. I see. I mean, I don't think I was pissed at you. I think 
I was taking it out on you. That's probably more accurate. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think I remember our time, you and your mom being both afraid of me. Yeah. Because you just yelled about everything and you can get in my face. And it was, it was intense and it was nothing I could do about it. Let's back up for a second. I would yell at her. I would never physically touch her. I didn't say he hit me. I just said he got in my face. Let's draw that line in the sand. You would like, like, no, I couldn't do anything about it. Like I couldn't get you to calm down. You wouldn't listen to me. If I yelled back, it didn't matter. If I didn't yell back, it didn't matter. Like I, there was nothing you were just going to yell at me. And then that was that. And then you might storm out and leave. And then I would just have to wonder if you were going to come back. I don't know what you're doing. So did you think I wouldn't come back? I mean, I didn't, I didn't know what you were doing sometimes. So I would leave and you would just be like, well, this could be the last time I see him. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't respond to me, so. Oh, yeah. And this is not, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. It's just the way it was, you know. I know you want to get into me on this episode, but I Mm -hmm. think it's a, this is a better episode letting you talk. Okay, that's fine. I Um, mean, we can always get into me later, but. Yeah, we never hear an episode from your perspective, just your perspective. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of mind blowing for me. Okay, yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, like, it just and then, you know, like, towards the end, you would go and I would get my annual review. And it was a lot of you suck at this, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. And basically being told like, oh, you know, you're not doing good enough. And if it doesn't improve then next year, you know, like basically like threatening, like I'm probably gonna fire you next year. I remember they doing that to you a lot. And I remember being stressed. And that's why when that happened the last time I finally was like, I just- I'll call this noise. I can't, I just, this is unfair. I can't keep wondering when I'm doing so much shit for this place and I have no, life i feel like except work sometimes i don't i can't keep doing this like it's just it's messing with me like i shouldn't be driving home dreaming about driving off into the lake so i don't have to go back to work tomorrow you know like that's that's messed up you think derek our friend derek goes through this too derek works in a hospital and i i doubt it i'd love to have him on i mean i would to see his perspective on what he sees and deals with. Yeah, I love, Derek is a great guy, but I I mean, I don't know. I'm sure everyone has stresses in their job, right? I mean, the job I have now, it's not like it's not stressful sometimes, but it's very, very different than it was. But it just, and I feel like when we would get in arguments or have disagreements, it was a lot harder because- on a lot of medication. You, number one, were going to be on like 100 because of what you had going on. But then I already was just like feeling like like the scum of the earth some days. Because of work. Yes. And then, you know, because you get all this negative feedback at work and then you have patients giving you negativity too. And then you come home and now you're mad too. And I understand. Well, I was mad at the world. No, and I understand that. But you, from where I was... It was just like I couldn't do anything right. And there were a lot of times where I just felt very alone and like like I was just worthless. But I didn't feel like I could talk to you about it because you had so much other stuff going on. I honestly, at that time, I wasn't able to give you what you no, needed. No, and I understand that. And I'm again, this is not uh, judging. We're not judging anything. each other, but yeah. I was so, I was hurting. I know. And I'm still hurting, but not to that extent. It's a lot better. It's a lot better. And now, honestly, like, besides the fact we spent a lot of time working on, you know, like we had that episode recently where we did communication styles and all that. Um, Just in general now, because I don't have that burden, like when I'm off from work in the afternoon, which I get off a lot earlier than I used to. But oh, when Fridays. I'm, yeah, but I go in better. later. And I go in later. So, um, but when I'm off, if it's the weekend, if it's, which I get every weekend off now, but if it's a weekend, if it's vacation time that I put in, that's, that's that. I don't worry about work. I don't have to deal with work. I don't have to stress about it, deal with things there. And then if you're having a bad day or an off day, or there's something off between us, I feel like it's a lot easier to resolve now. 
Yeah. Because now you are in a better mental state, but I feel like if, because I'm able to be in a better mental state, if you were to delve back into like you did, where you were so off and angry, it would be easier for me to deal with it. I feel like than it was rather than me, because I would try not to get angry, but I just couldn't tolerate, you know, I remember I was fighting, but you, you trying to yell at me, but I would, at that point, I was just so angry at you. Yeah. I just didn't care. Mm -hmm. I was, I was so angry at you and your mom that I was just like, I don't care if you get hit by a bus. That's what literally was going through my mind. I was like, I don't care if these people are around or not around. Mm -hmm. They just drive me nuts. Yeah. They don't let me do what I want to be or how I want to do. Exactly. So I would go to work and then feel like I wasn't doing anything correctly there. Like I couldn't keep up, like, you know, all this, you know, you're not good enough. You're not doing things correctly, blah, blah, blah. And then I would come home and feel exactly the same way. But that wasn't because of you. That was because of all the pain medications. No, no, no. And I and understand everything like that. that. And my physical pain that I was trying to learn how to basically refunction. Mm hmm. And I think that's an important step is people that have that are not born with chronic pain and have it mm -hmm. thrusted upon them, they have to learn how to function again. Mm -hmm. And that is a big part of it. But that just goes to say, like, you need both of you, whoever has the chronic pain, whoever doesn't, who's the caregiver, who's there to support. It's so important to have everybody work on their well-being. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the point. And for a while, nobody was doing that. So, and I mean, it got to the point where I was just like, you know, like you can stay here, you can leave. I don't really care. You told me that several times. You can stay, you can go. I just couldn't deal with it. You know, like if you're telling me you hate being around me so much, then go because. I remember you tried to pack my suitcase. I did. One several time. times. Oh, maybe it was more than once. Uh, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of times where I was just like, well, my only friend is the dog. And that was Dexter at the time. Yeah. At least now I have two friends. Right? To sleep with. One. One in particular. But... Lucy Goosey. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it just, so it was hard because you get into these patterns and you get into you know so much stress and feeling so overwhelmed and you don't know what to do about it and you just keep repeating the same thing over and over again and you're like like you're stuck like that's how it is so uh, you might have asked, answered this when mm -hmm. was the definitive moment you were done with cbs i know the review didn't help and then they just started, we were doing vaccines and they would bring in extra pharmacists to do it. And then the vaccines were slowing down. So then they're like, oh, we're not going to do that anymore. You guys have to work it into your workflow. And I would literally get so tired of trying to, you because the COVID vaccines, you have to mix. And then you have to use them within a certain period of time. So you're playing like a guessing game sometimes and people have appointments and they don't want to wait and they get mad when they come in and i'd literally be there like on a weekend and be me and one tech and that tech is trying to do covid testing and i have to do vaccines and there's nobody to do anything in the pharmacy and i just was getting tired and that's really what it was like covid was a big breaking point for the profession of pharmacy they're just they just take 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 expect you to do more and more and more they and over time if you remember we used to be open eight to nine eight to nine and then they started having us go nine to nine uh -huh. and then it was nine to eight yep. and every time it was you're losing money because they just take that from your paycheck sorry you're salaried but you're not working the same number of hours so we don't have to pay you the same keep in mind cbs loves to do that little line your salary for some things like going to meetings and not getting paid. But when you're working in your store, you're hourly right. and paid on that. And that was frustrating me too. And I saw the writing on the wall coming and they did it. They cut the hours again. I don't know if it started this week or next week where now they're closing at seven. Oh, and they're closing at seven? Yes. Wow, I didn't know that. Yes. And guess what they do? If you're a manager, 
oh, you can take most of the hours and just screw your partner over. And I, as a person, don't feel that's morally correct. And I did not do that the first time. I did give myself a little bit extra hours. And honestly, that was because I had shit to do as a manager. Like I was like, I just physically need to be here. And I feel like it's unfair for me to be here and not get paid. So I'm gonna take a couple extra hours. I was straight up with him. I was just like, this is how it is, sorry. You know, but I have to do X number of things as the manager and I need some time to do it here to make sure everything is good. So So what are they gonna do now that they're closing at seven? Well, my understanding is is that my former partner has like barely 30 hours now. Yeah. So is he gonna look for another job? I don't know. I feel I need to check in with him actually and see. I mean, if, how many hours do you usually you'd work? 40 hours a week, right? When I first started, I had one week that was just under 40 and one that was over. And then by the time I left, it was like 37 hours a week. So I wasn't even at 40. I had technicians sometimes that worked more hours in the store than I did. Well, paid. But is it still a living wage, though? It's a living with so here's the thing with pharmacy right now they're offering my understanding is new grads lower pay, which is some bullshit because they make so much fucking money. It's it's shit how how they pay people in the profession how they staff the stores that's garbage, but the pay you get sounds great because you do get paid a decent amount as a pharmacist i'm not gonna lie. However, retail pharmacy because of all the time I spent outside of my working hours. Like I told you, I worked on the schedule at home. I did conference calls on my days off. I would go in early, I would stay late. I went in on days off when the store was like struggling very badly. When they sometimes put people in there who couldn't keep up with the workflow, I would go in and help just so we wouldn't be behind. Didn't get paid for that. When you look at the actual hours you work, it's you're not paid what they imply. It's not the same. And again, you're mentally drained, you're physically drained, you're not earning what you should, you're not getting paid. And that's the thing, pharmacists are people pleasers, so you stay late for free, come in early for free, we want to try and take care of people despite what you may or may not believe, yes. And it's impossible. It's impossible to do it safely with what they, they have going on. And like one of the the worst things too, like um, when I decided to leave because I got the job offer from my the current specialty pharmacy I work at. When I got the job offer and I submitted my resignation, it was just like, oh, okay, no, well, sorry to see you go. Yeah, her boss didn't even hit her up. Nobody, nobody from nobody corporate from acknowledged corporate it, and I worked there for like fourteen years. And I was sixteen. No. No. Mm-mm, no. Fourteen. Okay. Yeah, about fourteen years. Started as a tech, then was an intern, then was a pharmacist. Nobody from Corman even acknowledged it. That blew my mind. It that just, none of your bosses hit you up and said, is there anything we could do to keep nobody you cared. on? Nobody cared. They didn't care. Nothing. Nope. And they're, I think they're still there. Yeah, but no one cared. No, that's that's how they treat you. You're just a number in and out. No problem. Good luck your next job. And then even like with the problems that do come about in my new pharmacy, like the the manager I have now is just it's just so much positivity. And you know, I had a review today and he's just like, Oh, talking to you, it's always so positive and and you know, I was just like, That's so nice to hear, you know? Like they're definitely not gonna get rid of you. Well, I don't I don't wanna get into the corporate because corporate is corporate, but it makes a difference who's managing you, who's right above you, you know, the attitudes that you get. And I mean, there was a time when it wasn't so negative at CVS and I kept thinking, you know, things will improve, it'll get better. And it just, I had to sit and finally say, it's not, it's going the wrong way. And it's, it's not worth it. You know, it's very scary to leave because, you know, the monster, you know, might be better than the monster you don't. Right? Yeah. The enemy you know, maybe better than the enemy you don't, whatever, however you want to phrase it. And yeah. in this case, the grass was greener. And anytime people ask in pharmacy groups about it, I'm like, do it. 
there was a great pharmacist, Mitch, who used to do a podcast, the retail pharmacy what, podcast. What happened with that? He doesn't do it anymore. He stopped doing it like a year ago. Just because? I don't know. He he did retail pharmacy and he would he had so many pharmacists that would listen to him, including me. I loved his podcast. I wrote into him before. I loved hearing his stories and other people's stories and interviews he did. And it would just be a way for, you know, he's just like, we're not alone. We're all in this together doing this retail thing. It's hard. I know. And he was so encouraging. And then one day he posted an episode and he was like, two days ago, I quit my job. I didn't know I was going to quit my job, but I did. And I can't do the podcast anymore. And he just, he couldn't do it. And it made me so sad because he was so positive and so like uplifting and important for us and he was like i i didn't i couldn't do it and every once in a while like there's other pharmacy groups i follow like the accidental pharmacist he is an idiot i love him he's so funny um he and his wife are pharmacists he works at an independent and his wife works at walgreens and she's they're both big big advocates they've been on the news actually talking about the shitty conditions of retail pharmacy um but they they posted too about Mitch everybody was worried about him and every once in a while they post and everyone's like you'll see there's a flood of comments where people are like is Mitch okay has anyone talked to him and you know you look up to see honestly people have looked to see if his license is still active and it's there because we were really worried that he hurt himself he was gonna hurt himself you know he was married and and you know that we just had no way to get a hold of him so you know his real name yeah his name is Mitch Lee Mitch Lee Farm D and he did the retail podcast he was in uh he lives or he did live in Tennessee so yeah everyone was trying what they could to try and check on him because we but were he was happened? our family I I don't know but his license was still active so that's all we can go off for now I hope someday he comes out at least on one of our pharmacy pages and he's like hey guys I'm doing better you know if anything for his mental health I hope he's he's doing better out there because he was a true friend to everybody and if you go like the accidental pharmacist um rx comedy those are two great ones i follow maurice so back up for a second he, mm-hmm. he had quit doing the podcast because he couldn't do his job anymore no he he just he would had talked previously where he was in therapy and he had the same struggles as all of us with mental health and dealing with the stresses and one day he just woke up and was like i can't do this anymore and he quit his job and he said on his last episode that he quit and he had not planned to it's just something he did wow because he just he couldn't per- pretend that he was okay and that made me very sad for him and that's why we all still worry about him and i still think about him you know it's hard and like i said there's all sorts of stories out there like you'll see um like i said the accidental pharmacist maurice from rx comedy they post lots of funny memes and they keep everything like light for us and let us vent I don't really need to anymore, but retail pharmacists checking in, vent on things, you know, make jokes uh, just to try and get through the day. But they also share real stories. Um, talked about the pharmacist who died. There was another district leader from CVS, I think in Pennsylvania, who was not that old. He had kids and a wife and he died suddenly of a heart attack and nobody acknowledged it. Wow. Nobody There's talked so about it. There's so many deaths in CVS that I had no idea about. There are stories about um pregnant pharmacists who uh, are struggling to be able to leave when their water breaks shut up yeah because they're like oh we need to send coverage and it's like i need to go to the hospital i'm about to have a baby like you just leave yeah some of them do they're like what are you gonna do like i have to go like i need to physically leave I'm and having that's, an emergency. that's what you would do, right? Like, yeah. I'd be like everybody out. I, I'm having a baby. I mean, there's certain things, but this is how they condition you that you are so scared of losing your job and they make it so you feel like there's no other options for you. You you have to be here. There's no choice. And if you stick a toe out of line, we'll fire you and it's going to be the worst thing ever for you. No. And eventually you have to just say, you know what? No. It's that's not how it is. That's how people brainwash you. That's what it is. I mean, because now that you've left, you would mm-hmm. never go back. No. And I remember sitting in a meeting where like one pharmacist she had left. I think she just went to another retail. So like Walmart or Walgreens or something. And she came back. Oh, see, she left and came back. It wasn't better out there. 
that's the kind of shit they would do. But that's not true. It's not. And when that documentary finally comes out, I hope a lot more people will see how it is. We'll have to check out that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're working on it. Is it in post right now? I think they're still doing interviews and things. They're doing interviews with people who are willing to be on camera and talk about about it. and, And I don't feel like the stories that they have, I feel like are more important. Oh, okay. I don't know. And I have other platforms where I can share like here right. where I know people will hear it, but they, I mean, they're interviewing people literally, like I was telling you, like, you know, who've seen people personally, like fall on the floor, or had an emergency and felt like well, they couldn't leave, you're... who have to take Prozac now because they're so mentally and uns- like, like depressed or what anxiety, anxiety, whatever it may be. Well, do you remember when your front store got robbed and you were in the back? I was not. That was Andy. Oh, that's right. Andy. It's though. Andy was working in the back and the pharmacy all alone. He came in, I think, early that day. He was just hanging out, doing what Andy does, getting ready for the day. And they got robbed up front and he had no idea. He's just in the back the whole time. And, and I, he's just so nonchalant about it. I miss Andy. I really do. Andy is a great pharmacist. He got to go to an independent and Hopefully I was very happy for him. For I was him. so happy when he got another job. I think he's uh I remember when he came over to our apartment and he was super pissed because they were messing with his money. He he, he was had super pissed. He I was had like, some like surgery, mind you, which was related to reaching and counting because you can get carpal tunnel and stuff from doing that stuff all day. Reaching up, opening bottles, all of that. You don't think about it. And he had surgery because of like related to that. Uh, and yeah, they started giving him a hard time. And then they were getting ready to ax him, and he was like, yeah. "Fuck all that noise," and got another job and yep. dipped. And I missed him, but I was just like, that's what you should do. Is so, leave. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's married now. With oh, his new wife. Is he? That's good. I follow him on Facebook. I do too, but honestly, I don't get on Facebook like that. So. Neither do I. I just miss a lot of stuff, I think, on Facebook because I just, I do Instagram. I do a lot of business, like podcast stuff, and then I, I fuck around on TikTok for a while, and then I'm just done with social media. <laughs> that's really like how my social media is now right honestly but yeah so i mean it just it was really hard and there's i still have leftover from retail where i told you like you go under reviews you have visits and they're just like you suck at this you suck at that you're not doing a good job blah 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 where i still it's like an imposter syndrome have you ever heard of that Mm -hmm. yeah that's how i feel you should explain it for the people that don't. so imposter syndrome is where you basically it's kind of like what it sounds like where you're working work is probably the most common i'm sure it happens in other places but like you're at work and you just constantly feel like you're a failure doesn't matter really what feedback you're getting or how you're actually performing but do you feel like someone is going to figure out that you don't know what you're doing and that you're you're there and everyone thinks that you you know what you're doing you have all this like mental capacity, you know what you're doing, like as a pharmacist, for example, and someday someone's going to figure out that you don't, and you feel like internally, you don't know what you're doing. Just lying the whole time. Have you ever seen the show, The Pretender? I don't think so. My dad used to love that show. A guy who was super genius, Mm -hmm. and he could be anything he put his mind to, like Mm -hmm. he just could pretend to do it. Mm -hmm. Like he was a pharmacist one day, he was a, he was a, he drove NASCAR one for one episode, but that's kind of how you feel yeah it was on nbc or abc going way way back but mm -hmm. pretender like the same sort of thing yeah so i still struggle with that where i'm just like i don't i clearly don't know what i'm doing i'm going to be next on the chopping block you know and my work friend she definitely feels the same way and i'm just like you're crazy and it's so much easier to see in someone else and say like you're insane like i see what you're doing you're so good at your job And then, you know, you sit there and you're just like, oh, I'm super incompetent. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why they kept me around, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know some of that is from that, that CVS feeling, you know, like today when they did a review, it's just like, okay, like kind of raise, am I going to get like 50 cents? (laughs) Like that's how you feel because yeah, because it's not, it's not the same garbage right you actually got a decent raise he even See, said that he's like you're not used to this from retail and i was like no i didn't get any raises the right. last couple of years 
I got the, zero raises from the, CVS. And the bonuses weren't that great either. No, because they're all based on metrics. And if CVS you ever see in the news, CVS, Walgreens, doesn't matter. They come out and say they don't have metrics on pharmacists. It is a lie. They time everything that they do. Things go red. No, it doesn't go red anymore. It goes orange because they said it was less less scary. Oh, my goodness. But it means it's overdue. It doesn't matter. But they will put prescriptions in there. Overdue. You didn't type up the prescription fast enough. It's overdue. You didn't get your voicemail fast enough. It's overdue. On top of you didn't do enough vaccines. You didn't do enough of anything. I mean, you didn't do enough adherence calls. Yeah, CVS calls you all the time, right? And it's like, you need to, what are you doing, buddy? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dog is, come on, buddy. I know you're tired. Okay. Um, CVS calls you all the time. They're like, you need to refill this bullshit medicine, whatever. They're required to call you and they track how many calls they do and how successful they are at making you fill it. That is a metric if you don't get enough people to fill their refills also all they everything they do is track 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 i don't get tracked on how many consultations i do they do track the length of my phone calls and and whatnot and i'm like well that you have to have some sort of goals and and whatnot right it's reasonable but i don't get told like you didn't do enough consultations this week you didn't get enough prescriptions you didn't take enough new verbal prescriptions this week that's what cvs would do why didn't you take more more prescriptions this week from the doctor's offices? Why didn't you talk to more of your patients? That's what they do. They track it. Every single thing, everything they ask you to sign up for, autofill, 90-day prescriptions, all that stuff, they track it. And there is a percentage they expect you to meet. Text messages, all of that stuff. Care passes, all of that. So next time you're in there and they're asking you to sign up for this stuff or do something, just remember they have a metric on it and that's why they're asking you. We should definitely do a part two of this. Yes, I have stuff we, I want to dive into with you in particular. This that I episode think would be good. could go longer. Yeah, I'm sorry. It no, was just a lot. It's good that you vent because I don't think we, our viewers or listeners have actually heard it from your perspective. Mm-hmm. I don't want to cut you short. No, I'm I, just we, saying I think we covered it's all my notes, but we are we're recording this kind of late. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, we will do a part two to this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's stuff I particularly want to talk about with Robbie, which we talked about a little bit, like with the anger issues and stuff. And then um, a little bit more, I guess, about how we're doing these days, which we touched on. But yeah, just wanted to to share that if you're out there and you're caring for someone with chronic pain and you feel overwhelmed and stressed outside of just dealing with that, then you're not alone. You know, just remember that. And it's hard and you maybe want to just be done with everything some days, but you know, it's if you need that person, that person needs you. So just remember that. And a side note, if, for everybody that's watching this on YouTube, <laughs> if you liked my shirt, Please go buy a shirt. Yeah, from him. we we produce these shirts. We uh, I design them and everything. The link will be in the description. The the shirt. This is, is our Watcher shirt. So that's more related. To, I, if you like the Watcher series on Netflix. I well, we, I was gonna say like our Boogeyman pod. Boogeyman pod. Yes. Yeah, we tend to have more merchandise for that, and then I'm working on like Pixie Dust Twins. But I don't, we can probably come up with some stuff for yeah, we'll, chronic we'll, pain. We'll We're working that. on it. Yeah, slowly but surely. And and if you need something fun after this depressing episode, if you, speaking of the Pixie Dust Twins, just released our episode on Thor, Love, and Thunder. So if you want to go check that out, it's a little bit more lighthearted. Well, the Boogeyman pod just left or I, launched an episode for. Uh, the only reason I didn't bring that up is because it was Halloween Resurrection and that movie was some bullshit. Halloween Resurrection. But yes. people might still like it. If you like so go, shitty movies. So go check that out. Go listen to our shitty review on that shitty movie. No. But next week we will be talking about Halloween 2018 and I promise it'll be so much better for that one. I'm sorry. That movie was just so stupid. I just. Mm. But I like Buster Rhymes. So there you go. Dangertainment. That's like the best thing ever. That movie is so dumb, but every time Robbie does that, it makes me laugh. So on that yeah. note, thank you for tuning in. This has been the painful truth of living with chronic pain. It sure has. On the Limitless Broadcasting Network. Yep. Please like, subscribe, go like all of our podcasts. Mm-hmm. Please leave a comment. 
share, mm -hmm. share this video mm -hmm. really helps us out. Yep. If you know anybody that's dealing with uh, depression, chronic pain, let, any, us know. let us know, depression, anything, send, a, send them to our podcast. You're not alone. Yeah, exactly. All right. Until Thanks next a lot. time. Part two. Bye bye. bye. Thanks for listening to The Painful Truth of Living with Chronic Pain with Robbie and Sammy. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe to the Limitless Podcast Network's own channel, Instagram, and all things social media. And we'll see you all real soon.